Elon Musk lives rent free in a lot of people's heads. And in the future, he would like to charge for that. In case you missed it, yet another one of Elon Musk's startups, a company called Neuralink, recently had a milestone achievement when they implanted, seemingly successfully, a chip into a human being's brain. It's all part of Elon's longer term play to turn humans into humanoids, these part AI, part machine, part humans, so that humanity might better be able to fight the AI bots in an apocalypse. In an AI apocalypse scenario, if we are part AI, then we can fight off the AI robots and or, or maybe just live more harmoniously with our AI brethren. I'm not really kidding you. This is actually Elon's plan. It is the purpose behind his company, Neuralink. It is why he is implanting this chip into people's brains. And it is the topic of today's episode. If you have been enjoying this content before we dive into the story, please do consider subscribing to the channel, commenting, liking. I really appreciate getting your feedback. And we got a lot more good stuff coming out for you this year. Okay, let's back up here for a second. Uh, what is Neuralink? Neuralink is a technology company founded by Elon Musk and seven other scientists, scientists ranging from neuroscientists to robotic experts to biochemists, that builds implantable brain computer interfaces. Specifically, they are building devices that can be put into the brain. So a neurosurgeon will cut open your skull, put this device in your brain, and then a little robot goes and attaches a bunch of little threads. There's all these little strands that are thinner than a piece of hair attached to this device that gets attached to your brain. And the robot goes and then attaches those little strands to neurons in your brain so that Neuralink can monitor the firings of your brain neurons and then interpret that data and do all sorts of things as a result of that data, transmit that data to various things. We'll get into that in just a moment. But that is what this company does. It is so funny to me because you have you know, mostly on the right, you have conservatives who are like, oh my God, Bill Gates is is vaccinating us and he wants to mind control and take over the world with these vaccines. And then it's like, Elon Musk literally wants to put chips in all of our brains and read our minds. Anyway, Neuralink is a very secretive company. So we don't know everything they got going on or exactly what they're planning, but here's what seemingly they're trying to do. So you get this little chip, it's in your brain. There's all these strands coming off. It's attaching to a thousand neurons. Neuralink is then reading data coming off of the firing. They've got an AI algorithm that interprets the neuron firings that are happening. And in stage one of this, the goal is that those neuron firings will actually allow a person to control an iPhone in various ways or a computer simply with their mind. So they can be thinking thoughts, hey, move the cursor, thinking, typing, thinking of a letter, and then that stuff will happen on the screen that it's connected to, iPhone, computer, et cetera. Now, this is just phase one. In phase two of this whole thing, Neuralink wants to actually be able to connect this device in the brain to other parts of the body to help solve diseases, first and foremost, paraplegia and quadriplegia. So the thinking being, like, if you have a spinal injury, you have something maybe in your spine, you have this Neuralink device in your brain, they can talk to one another, and now you'll actually be able to move your limbs again, limbs that you previously could not move. And in fact, it's believed that this first patient that got implanted with the Neuralink device is actually a quadriplegic. At a minimum, we know that Neuralink was recruiting quadriplegics to be test subjects. That's what they'd gotten approval for via the FDA. So we don't know for sure, but it seems like this, this person may be quadriplegic and that this is something that will be tested in the not too distant future. Now, further in the future, Musk wants to do other things like cure blindness and ALS and Parkinson's diseases and other things like that. And then the longest milestone in the roadmap, of course, is what I referenced at the top, which is to start implanting these devices into able-bodied people, into healthy brains, and just using it as a way to enhance or augment humanity. Now, if all this sounds unbelievable and impressive, it definitely is. But these early phases, the things that Neuralink is working on right now, when it comes to the paraplegia, the quadriplegia, the mind control of devices, that has all been done before. So the ability to control a computer screen or uh, you know, do basic computer commands with your brain is actually technology that's been around since the 1990s. There was an interesting moment when Elon tweeted out a video of a Neuralink monkey playing a video game solely with his mind, where the internet went crazy. This video has been viewed 6.6 .6 million times. People were like, oh my gosh, like Musk, in addition to everything else, has now given monkeys the ability to play a video game solely with their brains. Like, this is crazy. And the scientific community was a little bit more like, 
everyone needs to calm down. We have been enabling monkeys to play computer games with their brain for, for quite some time now. So they were less impressed and it led to accusations that Musk is a bit of a charlatan who's, who, who brags about things that really aren't actually that impressive, on and on, that kind of stuff. And even helping paraplegics is not entirely new. There's a company, a brain computer interface company out of Switzerland called Onward that their device actually goes into the spine and it has had some success already so far in helping paraplegics The results themselves, the results that Neuralink is driving towards in the short term here are themselves not necessarily particularly revelatory. What does seem to be really new and interesting with Neuralink is this device. Musk said that this device is called telepathy. Its ability to connect to over 1,000 neurons in the human brain seems to be what is so interesting and potentially very promising because no other device on the market is listening to nearly that amount of brain activity. And so if this device were to work and if Neuralink can really start to figure out how to interpret and discern what all thousand plus neurons mean when they fire, when they fire in certain patterns, the potential for what this could do is pretty incredible. It's also leveraging Bluetooth technology, which to my understanding is new. Like other devices aren't using Bluetooth to communicate with devices outside of the brain. So in a couple of different ways, it's seemingly pretty incredible. But again, the results aren't there yet. So we don't know. The potential for this device, the the way they've innovated with the hardware itself, really, really interesting. But of course, only interesting ultimately if they can get results from it, which remains to be seen. Of course, Musk is busy. He's got a couple other companies. He's running a little company called Tesla, a little SpaceX making recyclable rockets. He's bringing internet to war zones via Starlink. And of course, his main pet project, which is a little company called Twitter (laughs) X. So he's quite busy. So he is not running the day to day at Neuralink. Now, Ashley Vance, who is a journalist, he was the biographer for Musk. He wrote, bio- he wrote Musk's authorized biography like a decade ago. He is apparently the only journalist reporter who has been allowed into Neuralink's HQ to really see what's going on there in person. He says that Musk stops by the Neuralink offices about once a month to get an update, to ask questions, to chime in, et cetera, et cetera. And Ashley said, having observed these meetings, that it is pretty impressive that Musk has a surprisingly, even to Ashley, surprisingly strong grasp of the technology here and of neuroscience. And, you know, again, Ashley reported on Musk back in the day, spent a lot of time with him at SpaceX, at at Tesla. He has seen and previously reported on Musk's pretty incredible ability to learn these unbelievably complicated subjects like rocket science, for example, and speak at at a pretty deep level with his employees and his scientists about the topic. And it seems like he's done the exact same thing here with Neuralink, which is that he has a a pretty robust understanding of all of the components of this such that he can really dialogue with his employees and with the scientists that are working on this. Now, Ashley does also say that Musk sometimes seems to like shoot a little wide of the mark and that he'll throw out these fantastical ideas or these goals or projections or whatever. And you can tell the scientists are like, "Uh uh-huh. Like a little pat on the head, like, yep, sure, sure, honey, whatever you say. Like they they give him lip service and they acknowledge him, but you can tell in the back of their minds, they're like, this man's cracked. Like, this is bullshit. This is not going to work. And we're just going to go back to to doing what we know we need to do after this man leaves. So, you know, there's a little bit of push and pull there, but nothing that wouldn't be expected. But the defining quality, according to Ashley, of a Musk visit to Neuralink offices is a refrain to move faster. And this gets us into the chief controversy around Neuralink, you could say. Musk wants things to move faster. And now this is a hallmark of Musk's leadership style. We know that this was true at SpaceX. This was true at at Tesla. He is always asking for things to to go faster. He's always setting unbelievably crazy, ambitious timelines to achieve things. They often don't get met. But for many people, there's sort of a difference, a visceral difference with Neuralink. When you're talking about chips that are going into a human's brain, there is this feeling like we don't want to rush this technology. And there are a lot of people who feel this way. Musk founded this company in 2016, as I mentioned, with seven other scientists. 
as of January 2022, six years on, only one of those original seven scientists remained at the company. And this was largely reportedly due to disagreements about timelines and goals and, and what the focus should be and how fast they should be moving. And this fast moving timeline has had consequences. You've had reports of animal abuse happening at Neuralink offices reportedly because of how quickly they were trying to move. So before they do these studies with a, with a human, they, they now have their first human trial happening as we speak. This is what this news is all about. Before that, they would run trials with animals and they're still running trials with animals, with monkeys, with pigs. And 1,500 animals died in Neuralink's care between 2018 and 2022. Many of those were intentionally euthanized. They were killed. But that's often because they were in pain or having horrible side effects or symptoms as a result of whatever tests Neuralink was running. Elon allegedly told employees to, quote, imagine a bomb was strapped to their head as they did their work as motivation for them to work faster and harder, saying like time is of the essence. The, the clock is ticking, the bomb is ticking, get this done. Now, what's interesting to me about this is that this criticism that Elon has gotten and gets around trying to move really fast is the same as the criticism that Elon has levied against Sam Altman and OpenAI, saying that they are moving way too quickly. And he has been open about this, saying they need to they need to be more public, they need to make it more open source, they need to slow down. And I've seen some who are accusing Elon of being hypocritical in this, like, oh, you want to move so fast with Neuralink that you will kill these animals, but you want Sam to move slowly when it comes to AI. But actually, this is perfectly in keeping with who Elon is and Elon's worldview. If you are a follower of Elon Musk, and frankly, even if you're not trying to be a follower of Elon Musk, it's like the Kardashians or Taylor Swift, it gets forced upon you, it is thrust upon you in our news environment. You know that Elon Musk gets out of bed in the morning for two things. One, to prevent existential threats to humanity, and two, to troll liberals on Twitter. That is seemingly, those are his two things. And actually, I think they may be connected to him in, in a variety of ways, but that's a separate conversation. This threat to human existence is the defining narrative for Musk's career. You have Tesla and SpaceX, which are both combatants against climate change. Tesla, of course, being an electric vehicle. SpaceX being that we can go be multi-planetary once we've used up all the resources on Earth. And, and then you have this concern around AI. He founded OpenAI, Elon Musk did back in the day, as a way to create an alternative to these big tech companies that he was worried would develop AI in ways that were harmful to humanity. And he has Neuralink, which he sees as a way to make humans partial AI creatures so that we will fare better in an AI future. So to him, moving fast on the solutions to the existential threats, making us part AI, part human, getting us to Mars, those things need to be undertaken with the urgency befitting the, the situation in his view, which is that humanity could all die and be wiped out. That needs to move unbelievably quickly like you have a bomb strapped to your head. The threats... AI, if you're working on the threat itself, the potential existential threat itself, the AI as OpenAI is, that needs to move slowly and with caution. And I think once you understand this, there's actually quite a bit of logic to Musk's reasoning, to the way Musk approaches Sam and OpenAI, as opposed to the way that he approaches Neuralink. I also, and not that he would necessarily say this publicly, though who the hell knows, he's a pretty loose cannon. I also think that for Musk, the death of some animals, even potentially harm to some humans, is a price worth paying if it ultimately gets us to saving humanity faster. Now, of course, most people would probably agree with that. Where we get a little stuck up, where we get a little hung up is whether or not any of these future doomsday scenarios are really going to happen. Are we really going to have some sort of AI apocalypse? Can Neuralink really prevent that? That's where things get a little dicier. But if, if you're Musk and you really believe this, and I think he does, because I believe that's why he's able to get such crazy results, is he really believes in what he's doing. It makes some sense. It makes some sense. In any case, the scientific world will be waiting with bated breath to learn more about the results of these early Neuralink tests with this very first patient who has gotten this implant. Elon, for his part, tweeted that this first human subject is recovering well and that there are, quote, promising neuron spike detections. So suggesting that basically 
Neuralink should be able to achieve this first goal of having this person control a device with their mind. They're seeing the neuron detection. They're, they're picking up the brain waves and the brain signals. So that's promising, but more will be revealed in time. All right, folks, that is our show for today. Please let me know what you think. Leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate you being here. Again, lots more great content coming out this year. So let me know what you think so we can make sure we're delivering to you what you want. And with that, I'll see you next time.